seconds. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I will call the Budget, Finance, and Investment Committee to order and welcome back to everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, the first item on our agenda is to approve minutes from our December meeting. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Sorry. Schaefer, and seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Our investment report. Um, I talked with Mr. Beatty. No bids were taken uh, this past month. Uh, and he said to report that the LGIP fund remains the same as he last reported, 0 0.09. So that is the investment report. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the report. Thank you, Commissioner P. Second. And seconded by Commissioner Salmon. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, if you will locate your fund condition report, our finance director, Mrs. Nolan, as always, will begin with the development tax report. We received $123,000 in the month of December. It brings our total for the fiscal year to $2,109,750. And I remind you, our budget uh, was $2.5 million for that revenue. On our cash balance. Gentlemen, if you'll move to cash balances, please. That's the fourth page of, of that. Um, you'll see that uh, Mr. Tucker has given you a little agenda on the side, I guess that's what you call it, tick mark on the sides <laughs> that indicates which, uh, in comparing the current balances to the year ago balances, which ones, if the mark is on the right, it's more, if it's on the left, it's less than, than the prior period. That's a quick look. Instead of smileys and frowns? you got <laughs> bars. <laughs> right moving bars on up. left moving bars. On up. <laughs> okay. Uh, at the end of December, total cash balances was a hundred and eighty-three million six hundred and seventy-two thousand with operating funds being 172735000 borrowed funds 10938000 You'll see that debt service is one that did decrease. The reason for that is, uh, remind you, we did have a $7.5 million internal borrowing to the fund. Um, the Blackman Middle, middle annex. 171 City County Road Project, is that the Hollis Hill Pike still, or is that, what, what project is that? Um, Joby Jackson. Oh, Joby Jackson, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, it's done, that's what I was thinking, I was just trying to remember what, what City County project was yeah. that. That's the one that's remaining. Okay. The last 171, what's, uh, it's Rachel's place, what's the status, where haven't we paved it yet? Isn't that what that is for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the re yeah. to finish the paving. Mm -hmm. They about uh -huh. forty-five thousand this month. In the current year, yeah. I mean, in the, the current, current month. month, it's not Pretty done. Soon. Well, it's been on here for a while, isn't it? or is it that just the just a few months? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it was a hundred. It started at one hundred and fifteen thousand. We paid about forty-five thousand out this month, thirty mm -hmm. in December. So that only leaves twenty something thousand. Uh, 69, 69,000. It was 115,000. Oh, this is through December. Yes, this is through December. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other item of note on here, if you look at Elam Road Fire Station, it has a deficit cash balance, and we're we'll asked for an amendment later um, for that one and for the a Midland Fire. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Shall we move to the revenue sheets? Now, on this one, um, on the one with the general fund, and this is looking at the, at the uh, and you're going to see this for most of the funds, as far as total uh, compared to the budget, we're ahead of when you look at the prior five years of where we were to actual. But I want to focus on the general fund 
local taxes where we're showing 59% um, collected. And I, there's two things going on that one. Uh, are, are compared to where we received 28 million the last 12 months, the last, I'm try that again, July through December of last fiscal year compared to July, December this year. Two things make that up, and one is the pilot agreements. It's 1.6 million more than what we had last year. And the current property tax, we've received $3.6 million more at this period than we did last year at this time. Two things going on that, we have five cents additional and the other item of note and that this affects every fund that has property tax in it. At the end of December 2013 we were 52.43% collected of the levy compared to last year at that time we were only 50% collected. So people have paid ahead. So that's kind of, that's why, it, why that is, is seeing those numbers and as time goes by they'll even out. Did you say 59%? 52. Okay, making me feel better. 52%. 52.43% collected at the end of December. Okay. okay. So that's kind of, I just kind of want to bring that, that that's what's going on. Now, on the ambulance fund, that is one where the revenues are kind of lagging compared to last year. Two point seven million compared to two point eight for the prior period. If we move to the second page, again on the ones that have property tax going into it, with which is the um, road and bridge, general purpose school, and the debt service that all has um, property tax going in it. And I'll jump to debt service. The other item of note why that is higher. We've already talked about it is how much the development tax has gone up. So you've got two factors going in that increased development tax and increase of people paying their taxes faster. <coughs> Sales tax, which really affects the school budget, is up 6.64% overall. That's all the governments combined <coughs> total. So you know, when the state is saying, you know, when the legislators were saying yesterday that, that the revenues are behind, ours are ahead <coughs> of where we were compared to last year. Yeah, I think your sales tax is up to his, his claim that franchise and excise taxes <coughs> are not up as much as they projected. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments Motion. about the um, <coughs> fund condition report? Motion to approve the report. Thank second. you, Commissioner Sanders. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Jordan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the risk management report. Uh, and as always, we have the report of two funds. We'll begin with fund 264 which is the health insurance fund. I'm going to go to the, the support. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take your attention to the self-funded claims. In December, we had claims of over $5 million, almost $5.3 million. The reason why that that looks really high is that we fund this every Monday. And in December, there were five Mondays. <laughs> Excuse me. But even still, overall, it was a little higher than average, it was higher than the other ones. The year to date average was $858 compared to the year to date last year of $868.83. When you blend in the on site medical, our year to date average is per employee per month is $891 that compared to $901 of last year which ends up being a 1.1% a negative trend. And we show you on the bottom is just uh, is our OPEB liability that just grows 
every month. Um, as of December 2013, the unfunded liability is uh, estimated at $67,919,000. It just continues to grow. We go to Fund 266, our Workers Injury Fund and OJI. At the end of December, our claims totaled 246719 compared to last fiscal year at 431374 I mentioned it last month, um, and I will mention again, I thought that we would have something coming through our books during the last um, period, but we do have a, a very high claim that is coming through on an old workers' comp that exceeds a million dollars. So that is that will be coming. It's uh, they'll set that reserve sometime this month. And I'm not sure when we'll ultimately be paying bills, but I just don't want y'all to be surprised when I come in later and ask for a transfer from fund balance to help fund this. Is that a final on that, or is that still ongoing? It's ongoing. Lifetime benefits on that one. Any questions or comments about the risk risk management financials? <coughs> yeah. How how long ago did that uh, big workers comp plane happen? It's I mean, ten years, incident? fifteen. It, this incident that we're paying for now is just has been medical costs that have been incurred Heard since from recently. it. Well, it's from years ago. It goes it's, that it happened and then something. In the something 90s, early 90s was the, okay. and then, I'm not sure on the date, but it oh, okay. preceded me coming. And so then it, something, and then there's, I don't want to, it's not rare. But then then it's, it's it like, spurred something else happened from the original. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, as the mayor alluded to, it's lifetime medical. Mm -hmm. So it was medical costs. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner. Jordan, seconded by Commissioner Jordan. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, item five, the general fund budget amendments. And our first amendment is from uh, juvenile detention. Ms. Du, good evening. Good evening. <coughs> but you were last. No, I was towards the front. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, tonight we are discussing an additional two thousand dollars that we received from a title one grant and I'd like to uh, put five hundred dollars into our uh, instructional supplies line item and the remaining extra fifteen hundred into other supplies and materials motion to approve I'll second Commissioner P seconded by Commissioner Schaefer discussion call the roll please Mr. Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gregory, if you'll join us, please. You have uh, two amendments. Uh, your first one uh, dealing with your conference. We'll start with that one, please. Yes, ma'am. What we're asking to do is take $5,000 from our drugs and medical supply line item over into an in-service training line item. Uh, we have a representative from the National District Attorneys Association that's agreed to come and do training in March uh, for our folks. Uh, and we're also going to invite law enforcement, the prosecutors, uh, and other folks in Middle Tennessee to this training. We're trying to encourage better relationships between our, uh, us and the legal system. <coughs> I did receive, uh, told Public Safety that I applied for uh, a grant to try to help offset some of these costs. I did get confirmation uh, last into last week, first of this week. I did receive $2,500 as well uh, to cover basically half of the cost, and then the registration fee should cover the uh, the remaining cost. It's just we're going to have some expenses before those fees come in. I'm chair. If we can separate these, uh, motion to approve this first one. Thank you. Yes. Second. Commissioner Sandlin, seconded by Commissioner P. Any further discussions or questions for Mr. Gregory? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. 
Yes, and Mr. Gregory does have uh, a second um, amendment, and uh, he has some support from the OIT department. <laughs> Mr. Gregory? I just tell them that I have problems with my phone system, and, and they get to do the technical aspect. But what we're asking to do, um, I, I took to public safety last month, but we did not have figures at that point. We're having some major problems with our telephone system. Um, we've borrowed sets from everywhere within the department that we can, and I still have folks that have to go to a different office to be able to use a phone because those phones, their, their handsets have died. We're also losing calls uh, in the middle of the conversation. Our phone system is so old, we never had caller ID, so I can't pick up the phone and call those folks back. And we're also having voicemails that are being dropped. Um, <coughs> OIT worked with um, um, a consultant as far as what we need for our phone system. To what we're asking tonight is for a budget amendment to take money uh, already in OIT's budget. The mayor has contributed some funds from his other charges line item, and we're moving around some money within our budget to be able to come up and try to get this phone system back where we're operational. Evidently, it's not the responsibility of the phone company to deal with any of this? The equipment is ours, correct? Should we try to replace the handsets? I've borrowed as many handsets as I have within the building, but I don't, I don't have any that I can pull from any, other, <coughs> any other parts of the facility. If um, I might say, I this is... say, tell us the situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, this system is acting a lot like four or five others that have gone before it, uh, which eventually completely died, uh, probably most recently in the planning department. Um, and. Uh, this is how these systems tend to behave when they start when they start to go out. Unfortunately for PAWS, even though that system is not just ancient, it was put in two or three years before voice over IP phone systems, maybe even four or five, four or five years before voice over IP phone systems uh, came into being cost effective. Uh, throughout the rest of the county, we have one or two departments at a time, or more particularly one uh, building at a time, begun to transition off of these uh, older Comdal uh, on-premise um, Centrix telephone systems over to a Cisco uh, VoIP, voice over IP based phone system, which is currently in place here in the courthouse, uh, in, the Gold, in the old Goldstein building, in the uh, uh, Juvenile Detention Center and Correctional Work Center. Those, those were our first new facilities to come online where we used the, this, this new type of phone system. Uh, and th those have served the county extremely well and transitioned us kind of from an 80s and 90s era break fix, uh, $200 every time you call your uh, telecom provider to come out uh, type of phone system to something that has been, knock on wood, we were talking about earlier today that we shouldn't say just how reliable these phone systems have been because we'll jinx ourselves. but. These are extremely uh, low maintenance and have served the departments where these systems are in place extremely well. Uh, uh, unfortunately for uh, Paul's in this particular instance, the return on investment that we typically see in a department that may have 40 or 50 copper telephone lines, he is not able to see because he only has four or five telephone lines in that facility. Uh, in the courthouse here, we had 40, 40 or 45 copper lines coming into this building that we were able to eliminate when we put in this, this uh, digital type of circuit. Well, those cost $25, $27 a month uh, just to have in the building. And the digital line, um, e each line that you have cost about a quarter a piece on this type of system but then you pay for the uh, digital data circuit, which is more like a trunk, instead of having little copper lines that are pulled into the building. So we figure about a three-year return on investment, even including equipment, in a building where you are eliminating 50 conventional copper telephone lines, landlines. Again, unfortunately for Michael, he's not going to see that quick of a return on investment in hard dollar monthly cost reductions because he only has five or six copper lines. It's just the nature of how <coughs> things are set up in there. Now ironically, he has probably he's probably in the top one or two highest call volume handling, consistent highest call volume handling 
departments in the whole county uh, with those five or six lines that, that he's he's got there and, and, and with the relatively small staff, not, not counting dispatch centers obviously but uh, so we think this we think this system will be um, very cost-effective and um, perhaps more importantly for him uh, is going to um, really function and be more defendable uh, as uh, as he's often as he often deals with calls of a, of a nature where complaints are logged as you all probably have uh, experience the, the Cisco phones uh, we're able to purchase at 48 percent off of list price on state contract. That's phenomenal. Even private sector can't purchase Cisco equipment at that deeply discounted uh, a rate, and that's been that way for several several years and continues to be. So th we're getting extremely good um, um, price for this equipment off of state contract. Uh, I also think that these handsets are a lot physically; they're a lot tighter. Then the combat handsets that we have in place, they're a sealed, it's a sealed chassis, so to speak, uh, that will be less prone to uh, the dust, the dust and uh, uh, dusty environment that we have out there, which is probably contributing to the, the early failure of these handsets. So that's, that's my quick overview of why we think this is uh, a smart way to go for, for Michael. He's able to uh, take advantage of call manager voice voicemail, uh, call manager equipment that's located here at the courthouse. So he's not um, having to reinvest the uh, well thirty thousand dollars is what we spent for the call manager that services all of these other VoIP sites throughout the county. So he is able to take advantage of that being located here in the courthouse, even though he's out at uh, Animal Services. Uh, you taking advantage of that now, or is this something? No, he gonna, will. Oh, he will. Yes, okay. he's completely okay. independent on a. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Now, there are th uh, three components that we think are uh, absolutely requisite for pause uh, call f calling functions that haven't been necessary for the pre for the departments that we've already done. We uh, have had requests for such features, such as the ability to page pick up a phone and for instance say throughout an entire department I need everyone to come to the front yeah. desk or, yeah, like that we've never we don't, we don't have the paging module so uh, the, within this uh, within this budget is uh, $2,000 to cover that uh, call accounting software we've we have had a need but not nearly as critical a need for call accounting which is just what it sounds like seeing exactly how long your calls lasted when they were placed uh, Michael goes through quite a bit of uh, manual labor to produce reports for public safety, which are really the lifeblood of his operation, I've learned as we've researched this, because uh, that's where his calls for service come from. And he oftentimes put himself, I'm not speaking, he can speak this better than I can, but I'm just telling you what I learned as I went through this. That's really important for him to be able to say, yes, you did call on that or no you didn't call seven times <laughs> in the last week and a half you, you called twice and we took your call the second, second yeah. time, you know yeah. so forth so, so anyway call accounting has never been that vital for a, another department but other departments will be able to take advantage of it when we when we put it in for him really yes uh, call recording system we've, we've not ever had a reason to have a call recording system in place uh, for any other of the county departments. There are probably departments that would like to have that option. In his case, the nature of his business, he's probably going to is probably going to say your call may be recorded for for um, quality assurance purposes, much like we get in private private right. industry, uh, and he'll be able to record those or record them at will and so forth and so on. So those that's ten thousand nine twelve thirteen. That's about that's almost fourteen thousand dollars in modules that will help everybody that's on this system or eventually gets on this system from day one just because it's required for for pause uh, the there's a one department in particular who is delighted to hear that we may have the paging relay in place and that's going to make a substantial difference for that department um, from day one so the total project is 19000 that's just what we're transferring here, the, the total project's what? The total project is $57,000. Okay, but you're needing the nineteen here to, to finish the project. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Uh, OIT 
had budgeted, and Mr. Burgess had his budget, $30,000 for phone system improvements uh, somewhere in the county. If that had not, if we had not had a system begin to fail, as of about February or March, we would have begun to look at somewhere like the old health department or another facility. That's one that I had considered uh, moving them over to voice over IP. But since his phone has begun to go out, then I would like to allocate the 30 plus another seven, 37,000 out of our budget that we think we can muster within that line item to be able to support uh, purchase, the purchase of this phone system uh, and make those improvements for the modules that we don't currently have on the call manager. What's the life expectancy on this changing the phone system over to what we're looking at right here tonight, Dan? Uh, I can only say that I think it will last substantially longer than the current system that's in place because it is tighter, There's the, uh, it's less environmentally uh, subject to failure. Uh, the handsets, handsets themselves are uh, end up being kind of dumber units than the old units used to have to be. Um, so they're actually less expensive than what we were paying for for phones with sidecars back in the day. Uh, I would say, well, adjusted for economy, but uh, we haven't had a single phone fail yet. Um, uh, that, that's the best way I know to answer that. Not sure. What's and the warranty on these? Yeah. Um, it's it's a it, it's part of the yearly maintenance. Yes, part of a yearly maintenance fee um, that we pay. Uh, so there'll be a one-year manufacturer's warranty, but we also will be uh, will be paying an annual amount that would be um, part of our total phone system maintenance agreement, uh, so that. That would be replaced if it did go into disrepair. When you replace a phone system for other departments, is it typically in this price range, $50,000, $55,000? Or is it more because, because you're getting the things like the intercom feature and the recording? Yeah. I, I think when we met with the mayor, Brian explained it well, was he said our phone system was probably one of the most complex systems that you all service. Just from the fact, you know, the paging system they talked about the other departments do not have. For us, that's mandatory. I mean, we don't have phones in our kennel areas, so our employees have to know when somebody's sending outside receiving. Um, and then the intercom that we have outside of our receiving door, while somebody's not in working receiving, or there's not a, a citizen there waiting for service, that employee goes and does other tasks within the shelter. If we don't have that paging system out there where they can ring the button and say, hey, I'm here and I need some help, they're just gonna stand there. So it's it's a lot more complex than, than what he said he's seen through any other department within the county. C certainly not. Uh, to do to do a department exactly like his three months from now after this is complete um, would be. Uh, I guess we could calculate it. It would be. It would be roughly fourteen thousand off of this price. So. But you're you're saying that all the different modules that you would be paying for his if it's approved would then be licensed for us to use in all of our other buildings that have this force over phone system yes yes sir but so that and that's why you're willing to put your money your budgeted money into this system so actually you're paying for all the other systems not just his and how much is yours that you're paying for the rest of the systems that uh, you're putting we in? have budgeted 30,000 but we can muster 37,000 to get us within the that's, that's not on this page. Well, that's why I'm wondering because they're only included in his budget currently. He's just going to use the allocated budget there, money. Well, it looks like it would show the transfer here for spending. It's in it. that line. It's they're, already in the 709 line item. They're, they're they're moving that money into so the 19,000 to accompany the 37,000 that I've allocated. He has the 37,000 mm -hmm. in his other in that budget already. They're going to put this with it, and then that will be. That will cover the entire cost. Well, I'm gonna say the same thing that I said when I got a call you know, telling me about this. Is it just seems like it's outrageously priced? Sixty thousand, basically sixty thousand dollars for a phone system. And I, I don't know, the sticker shock is something I hadn't got over. I, I was telling him maybe I will by the time it's been what four or five days. But I'm still having it. I just I'm just astounded. That a telephone system would cost that much. 
and I don't know how many how many people do you how many telephones do you have in your five lines? Didn't you say something like that? Yeah. Extensions. This would be fifteen handsets. Actually, it's more than that. Thirty. Yeah, 30, 30 I can think of 20, yeah. probably 25 different places. Have you got uh, that many employees? That many employees? No, but I have to have the paging system in the rooms where employees are, are going to be. Paid. And then we, when we built the, uh, when we built in the new surgery area, there's no paging system or phone system back there in that area at all. So if we need them, we have to physically get up and go back there to those areas. And this was going to put something in our storage area as well, because if you're back there working. So we have, right now we currently have, 20 plus or minus three or four handsets throughout different parts of the building. And how many people do you have set at phones to answer them? Sitting at a phone, we have the two folks that are up, up front that are actually answering the phones, but we obviously we have extensions throughout different offices in those different areas, like I discussed. All right. Excuse me if I might. Another thing to note, $16,971 of this is for a, is for network equipment to go in the data closets there. Darren, could you speak to that a little bit? Because those would those would have been slated for replacement in the next. Right. They, the, those, the, the current ones that he has in there are approaching end of life. You're looking at probably sometime next fall or early spring. We haven't got the notice yet from Cisco as to when they're going to choose the ones that he has and make them end of life. But they're getting close to time of end of life. So 16000 of that was to replace those two switches with, that he currently have, has with two newer switches and go ahead and make that all part of the same project. So his computers will connect into those new switches mm -hmm. as well as his phones. As his phone. And What's the to, maintenance agreement on per year? On the phone oh, system? Uh, yeah, on the system. Uh, well, you were talking about a yearly maintenance that we're going to be involved in here. So what, what is that? I'm not sure pay per year. That's not in this price then. No. That's just this is all purchase stuff here. Right. The, the recurrent there are some recurrent costs here. Dan. Yeah, there, well, there's a recurrent cost of thirteen dollars thirteen and fifty thirteen dollars fifteen cents per year per year for each voicemail that he has, and he'll have fifteen of those. Um, there's also about a ten dollar maintenance fee on the paging relay. Uh, 50 of those, so $500 up there. Uh, you got 15 voicemails? We have voicemails at each, each extension, yes, sir. Okay. And then the rest of the maintenance falls under, would fall under our overall maintenance umbrella for the phone system. So, so, though, uh, so it's, it's not just his department that's under this right. maintenance agreement package. Right. Right. You're doing that under your department. As a total blanket. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. The other voicemail accounts are for other departments. Not the all. The existing ones are the. Seem like you're talking about. Oh, we're adding that. Fifteen of them. We, have, we would be adding fifteen. His. He doesn't currently have voicemail at all. So. Yeah. And this uh, replaces his or original equipment. Is what's going out, and this is replaced. So it's about nine years old, something like that. You've been in the building. Uh, Almost 10 years. Yes, sir. I'm not going to motion approved. Second. Commissioner Jarnigan, seconded by Commissioner Jordan. Any further discussion? I, I understand. I'm just sitting here looking at these figures. And <coughs> I understand you're, you're spending about 20000 to upgrade the other departments, and then about 16000 is something you're probably going to have to replace anyway. And it's still a phone system that cost almost twenty-four thousand dollars. I mean, that's I don't know. Sticker shocks got me on that. I completely understand. I would just uh, remind it if we weren't clear. Then you know, some of this is computer network equipment. Sixteen thousand nine hundred seventy-one dollars of that is for two new switches to go in his wiring closets, which will help his entire network there in the building. And they would have been slated for replacement and another $550 worth of fiber connectors. Those would have been slated for replacement, even if he weren't touching his phone so system. So it's the 16000 you were just talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, so. And it comes down to it's not all, none of this is new money. It's coming out of your budget, your budget, and his budget. 
Yes. That makes me feel some better. You say all the time, y'all be talking to somebody in the line just drop out. People just thinking you're hanging up on them, you ain't getting served. Correct. And even if we had something as simple as caller ID, I could pick up the phone and call them back. But once they're gone, they're gone. Right. We've got to continue doing business out there. You've got to be able to do good customer service. I like that this is the same system as in all the rest of the county. If we can get everybody to have the same thing, then we can have a lot more, you know, availability to know how to maintain and operate and things like that. It says, like you said, no new money from on you know, out of fund balance. So, when we're, we're also draw, we're not paying for a couple of landlines that we would have been paying for. So there's some cost savings. Now you said it was it's a, a, a three-year recoup process. If you had 45 or 50 lines, mm -hmm. this is four or five lines. So I guess it's a 30-year recoup <laughs> process. And there's a little bit of recouping going on. Yes, yes, and again, a lot of his return on return on investment is going to be in more defendable, being able to take a more defendable position and be able to serve the public. Uh, with a little more confidence and qual qual quality assurance. It would be safe to say, though, that the phone system was underbuilt for what what's happening out there. Right. Probably yeah. so, but these kind of systems available. were not available then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's but, just technology improvements. Yeah, what? but even the trunk line brought in wasn't big enough for what he really needs. And I bet his call volume is probably, I don't know, probably probably quadruple. I'm just, that's yeah. a wild oh, okay. guess, but you would imagine that his call volume has gone up a lot beyond what it was originally built for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't it just last year, though, that we had a numerous different departments that their, just their phone bills per month sh uh, shot up that we had to increase our, the prices on? Which, which is telling me that anywhere in that type of area, communications, it's going up, whether you're starting from scratch or whether you're just living with what you got. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, we do have a motion and a second. Do we need any further discussion before we vote? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? No. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. We have a budget amendment from Correctional Work Center. Uh, Mrs. Nolan and or Mayor Burgess. Okay, this is different from the uh, amendment we've had previously. We had a $32,000 amendment for a chiller uh, replacement. And this is <coughs> in repairs to the boiler and uh, hot water heater. And so we're asking you to move $10,000 out of other uh, contracted services into repair and maintenance of equipment. Motion approved. Second. Commissioner Jernigan, thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Any further discussion? How long has that building been there? About six years. Well, I've said it before, I'll say it again. We're spending an awful lot of money on nearly new buildings. Something's mm -hmm. not yeah. right. Yeah. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yeah. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Mr. Salen? Aye. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Uh, we have two uh, budget amendments uh, from finance. Mrs. Nolan, your first one? Oh, well, actually, it's three, but two is combined <coughs> on this first one. And the first part of this amendment, do you remember when we had this last year and I requested money to be able to transfer to pay a Motorola payment if we didn't get the monies in from the feds? Well, the money did come in, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to have to use this amendment. I just don't want to skew my number, so I'm going to reverse it. So that's my first uh, request, is to reverse that transfer in of 280 and the transfer out of 280. The second one has to do with capital projects. <coughs> I alluded to at the beginning, we were looking at the cash balances. And it's a request for a, a total of 15,600, with 600 needed for the Midland Fosterville project and 15,000 for the Elam Road project. The, Elam Road Fire Department, <coughs> and there were several change orders that created that issue. Behind this amendment is the General Capital Projects Report, and if you'll skip past that cover page, I've got on here all the activity for the Midland Fosterville project, and it does show that um, 
based on what contracts we have out, we'll need about $600 to complete that one. And then the Elam Road, I am short uh, $14,790 at this point. Lisa, who approves the change orders for mayor? I do. And the one, I assume, was where they uh, we had decided we'd upgrade the one facility so they could stay overnight. Yeah, and we... I uh, recall that one. I don't know about the other one, though. Well, the biggest part of about half of the change orders was $20,000, roughly, to add um, some extra space so we could actually put the kitchen and... Uh, out there in a, in a bathroom separate so we could uh, that's the Elam Road that's the Elam yeah, Road that's yes, not sir. the one I was questioning I was wondering about the other now, the other one out there at uh, Midland Fosterville that's the one we need the $600 and then we had to, the last thing we had to do though if, if you remember is we had to go back and put that sprinkler system in there which cost us a it, lot of, a lot of money what kind of related to that was a engineering cost that kind of pulled that up okay I'd kind of like to do that a minute before we go into the next okay. one. Okay. Motion to approve. Commissioner Jordan, thank you. Sure. Seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Any discussion relative to this motion? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Commissioner Bond? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Gentlemen, if you'll keep scanning past the uh, general capital projects report, uh, you'll get to the second amendment. It's kind of, it's page 506 on the total. If you remember in August when we came back after our budgeting, I said, I knew at that point that the evaluations on some departments ended up being higher than what I had budgeted. But I had hoped that over time some of it would work its way out. We're half a year through, and I do want to clean up these payroll accounts to make sure that there is sufficient funding in the lines. And some of them had to do with the calculation, the way the, the way it was calculated. Uh, for example, sometimes uh, employee is if they get their paycheck over once a month, the calculation is different than if it's every two weeks. It ends up being an, an extra day. So that's where some of the calculations are. And I try to identify with every department what the issue was. Um, general sessions, I, I have noted on here that uh, an employee had left and could payroll uh, was paid out. But beyond that, it was some calculations I mean, calculate and evaluations in that particular one. But all of this totals up to 7397 that I would be requesting money coming out of fund balance. And it has to do with, uh, okay, so by department, county mayor 325 and related benefits, the personnel 715 uh, and related benefits, community learning $4. I know it's not much, but if it's less than a dollar, I don't ask, but this is going to be $4. Um, archive is 800 and the related benefits, general sessions $2,205. Uh, chancery, that was a, a table change of 1041 probation services 884 and then victims assistance program that particular one the person left and the payout and the person coming in was more than what the one left leaving so is it ends up being 165 dollars to make sure that there's sufficient funds so moved second commissioner sandlin thank you seconded by commissioner p Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Mr. Russell? Can, can I ask a question about the Midland, uh, the fire departments? Uh, just, we, we were supposed to get some money from the volunteer fire departments. Yes, we, got, we got it. We got it. It was just Midland that was to give us some. Uh, yes, sir. And, and they gave us what they were, said they would want to. Yes, sir. $20,000. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Okay. Russell. A Thank special you. purpose DEA fund budget amendment? Yes, ma'am. We uh, had asset forfeiture funds for uh, last month in the amount of $11,096. 
And tonight we're requesting to put $5,936 into our in-service line item and then $5,160 in repair and maintenance of vehicles. That's all I have. So moved. Second. Commissioner Schaefer seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Salmon? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Nothing in confidential tonight, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Item number seven, uh, we have a request to apply for a state grant for the drug court. Ms. Snyder, good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me. Um, well, you have the letter saying that we had expressed an interest and that they wanted us to apply. And we did. I mean, it's done. Um, but this is the thing. Th this grant will go through the Recovery Support Foundation, which is the 501c3 arm of drug court, our fundraising arm. But it will involve hiring a county employee, which the foundation will pay for. It's a three-year grant for $250,000 for a certified peer recovery specialist. <clears throat> this is someone who's been there, done that, and will be working with all of our participants. Uh, she will go through an official training with the state. I say she, it could be a he. Um, and this is someone who will work with our participants and hopefully reduce our recidivism rate and our termination rate. Right now we've got about a 50% re re uh, termination rate. And a lot of that is because when people <coughs> use, they get scared and they run. So this person would be able to get in touch with that person and, and talk them back and say, just because you use, we're not going to terminate you. Come on back. Let's talk about it, you know. So. Um, Three year, 100% funded. Mm -hmm. No and county after, match, anything. Mm -mm. No, not at all. They, well, this no. person will know after that three years, this is their job exactly. will be ended. Exactly. But it's the hope that the yeah. foundation will continue to right. support that. Right. So, which they've been supporting somebody's mm -hmm. um, salary for years now. I mean, I think we've been doing it for seven or eight years now. So they've been pretty good about following through with what they said they would do. Well, we have cut back on your department before, if I recall correctly. We did, in fact, um, when we hired uh, Anthony Yanis, our court monitor, that was a position that had been laid off before yep. when we lost the funding. So we have had to do that yeah. once. And his position is also being paid $20,000 a year by the foundation at this point. And then part of the DUI grant pays for that and then the drug court grant, of course. So. So it's just been applied for, and that's what the request is. Yeah, so we haven't. Yeah, we, we have haven't that. received it. Um, apparently, it's still in litigation. My understanding, I thought it was all resolved, but I found out after I wrote it that they, the state attorney general's office, still has to present to the court how this forty million dollars settlement is going to be uh, spent, and I guess that's what the grants were for. So um, I got it from a good source that it will be settled this year, but we don't know when. So that's what we're doing. Motion to approve and apply. Second. Commissioner Salmon, thank you. Seconded by Commissioner P. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. And there won't be anything for you to sign. It'll be the board that'll okay. sign everything. So it'll just, all of a sudden, I'll come and ask for a new position one day. Hopefully. So that's yeah. what'll happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hopefully. Bring your money with you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I will, I promise. Thank you very much and Happy New Year. Happy to New Year. Too. Gentlemen, item number eight, a request to approve a state grant contract for youth services. And I am just now learning that this is Mr. Savage that I read about in the minutes. Mr. Savage? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, Thank you for joining us, and if you will explain uh, your request. <clears throat> this is um, <clears throat> monies that we've gotten for, for years. Um, it's uh, federal dollars that's administered by the Department of Children's Services that each county uh, probation services gets $9,000 nine a year to help supplement a YSO's salary, and a YSO is a youth, youth service officer. Um, they've gone from approving a, a Nine nine thousand a year every year to now they've blocked it into five year blocks, 
So this would be 45,000 good through June 30th of 2019. So it's, it's just a different way of getting it. I mean, it's just, you won't have to see me but every five years, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Or at least not on this. Maybe, this on, yeah. maybe, on, <laughs> maybe on maybe on something else, but this just every five years. So it's just uh, free money. Motion to approve. Commissioner Jordan, thank you. Second. Seconded by Commissioner P. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Russell, are, are you going to... Uh, Back. Do this, okay? You're back. Yeah. He's back. I'm back. Uh, authorization to apply for a state grant uh, yes, from the sheriff's department. Yeah, the uh, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation has another uh, round of grants we're doing this year. Um, so we were contacted by Doug Buttery to do a to do a, another uh, grant application. So we want to put one in. We're going to look at redoing our roof um, and then some LED lighting. Um, it's a 50-50 matching grant, probably totaling around $300,000. So we're requesting to apply. We have to match it $300,000. Oh, just 150. Oh, 300 max, 150. Yes, okay, I got you. Half of 300. So we, need a roof. so we need a roof anyway, I take it. Yes. <laughs> That's all. We cannot apply for the grant and pay for the whole roof or apply for the grant and hopefully pay for Are you talking third. a flat roof or are you going to put a peak? Roof on it this time. I have no idea. We haven't gotten that. I don't think we've gotten that far. Hold we have three hundred thousand to cover, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it'd be a blue tarp and a yeah. blue tarp, yeah. bungee cord, <laughs> and a whole bunch of shingling, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's 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 in their little uh, document they have here. It's an energy efficient VFI seamless roof system over the mail detention block. That's my with added there insulation now. to yeah. the facility. So, I mean, that's, they've outlined it already, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make the motion to uh, allow the Sheriff's Department to apply. Thank you, Commissioner Shepard. I'll, I'll second that. I'll let them apply, then we'll second come back, back and right. see what it's got. <laughs> so. Works for me. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bolden, thank you for being with us. If you'll join us, please. Yes, and I have with me Madam Chairman, Mr. Robbie King, who represents the uh, applicant. This uh, request was presented to the uh, Rutherford County Health and Education Facilities Commission, or board rather, to uh, issue revenue bonds for multifamily housing. This is a rehab project in the north end of the county in an amount not to exceed $7.5 million. Uh, Mr. King can address any of the specifics about the project itself. I can tell you the two things that you usually always want to know, and that is, number one, there is no liability to the county or to the board in, in, in any regard, and this is not a tax abatement. There's not a tax abatement component to this request. It is simply the issuance of the revenue bonds through the board, which is the vehicle by which they do it. They already have a location where the building is and all that sort of stuff. It's a it? rehab, it's a actually, rehab. but Mr. King can tell you specifically where it is and, and what the project involves, if you'd like to know. Sure, sure. Happy to do it. It's a 130-unit existing apartment complex uh, near the intersection of Murfreesboro Road and Waldron Road. Uh, Rutherford Point is the name of the apartment complex. Uh, we look at, be looking to do an in-place rehab of about $10,000 per unit, uh, upgrading systems, not looking to add any units uh, or change you know, uh, any of the footprint of any of the buildings. Um, we'll be applying for tax-exempt bonds. We'll be receiving 4% low-income housing tax credits that will run with that. Uh, I anticipate that the bonds that the Health and Ed Board issues will be purchased by Citibank. Uh, we will pay somewhere in the neighborhood of five and a half to six percent, depending on where rates are when we lock. Uh, we plan to sell those tax credits to Regions Bank to raise the equity to uh, go in and do the rehab. This is at Murfreesboro Road and Stones River Road? 
Uh, I tell you, I'm not familiar with where okay. Stones River Road. I do have I've got a map here if that helps, but it's just over the county line from uh, Davidson. from Davidson. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, right near Stones River Road, that is correct. It used to be in my district, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's set back maybe set back maybe fifty yards. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it's it's okay. So we're acting as a conduit like the that's it. So I'll make a motion to approve. Commissioner Schaefer, thank you. Second the motion. Seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Any further discussion or questions for these gentlemen? Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you all for ladies. waiting. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you all very much. Mr. Nolan, uh, if you will join us, please. And uh, Mr. Nolan is asking for approval of financial assurance in lieu of bond documents for the landfill. And I think. This is something we do annually? It is, and it's a decrease in amount, and it's a amendable document, and there's a place in here where we can amend and do actually less than what we've been doing in the past on the decrease. So we need to and if you'll just read those numbers into the record, that we're decreasing it from? Uh, 3,241,882 to 3,000,000. 96,951. Motion approved. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second motion. And seconded from Commissioner Sandy. <coughs> this oh. is state kind of helps yes. us with that number, so it's what we need to have. I guess. Right. The state re TDEC requires us to have this for our landfill in case something goes wrong. Right. And as the landfill ages, the price goes down. Yeah. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Healy? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brown, if you'll join us, please. Uh, Mr. Brown is here to present his annual report on fixed assets. And Mr. Brown, I, I, I know we have all of this in front of us, so if you will uh, just briefly give us an overview of the important uh, information that you feel like that we need to know. Okay. That will work. Okay. For fiscal year 2012-2013, we had, at the end of the fiscal year, $920 million worth of capital assets with a total of $230 million in accumulated depreciation for a net of $690 million in net capital assets. Um, during the 2012-2013 fiscal year, we inventory audited 19 schools and 14 county departments. Um, those departments and schools, the average percentage of assets accounted for were 98.8%. Most fell between 97.5 and 100%. Four schools and 12 county departments achieved 100% accountability for all of their assets. Um, this year, the missing assets were down for a six year in a row. And by missing assets, an asset is considered remaining when it's not seen the first time we don't see the asset when we go out to inventory. The second time we don't see that asset, it is considered missing and that's when it is written off. Um, basically, your missing assets are on page 10 on your iPad, 10 and 11 on your iPads, and that will show you what departments and what was missing for each of those departments or schools. And that concludes, that's just the brief overview of everything that we did over the fiscal year 2012-2013. And we think usually 
at least I've interpreted in the past, that most of this stuff on this list is stuff that, like, it broke and probably got thrown away and didn't get taken out of inventory correctly. Right. Well, I mean, there's a list here, some printers, TV, PC. Right. We're hoping people aren't taking that stuff home. It's, it's exactly. stuff that got thrown in the dumpster. Or exactly. exactly. And, and if you look at the creation at the creation yeah. date, that tells it's when it was purchased. Yeah, 99. So someone was 99. 98, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody probably just trashed it or did some didn't get it through the proper channels to get it. A um, PC from December of ninety eight wouldn't be worth much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I don't think this is a very long list of missing items in the no. County with all of our schools and Exactly. Like has been commented, none of them are particularly new. If it were a brand new item that was missing, you might wonder if somebody walked off with it. But when you've got all these products from 1999. Right. And we have a total of approximately 65,000 active assets. So that amount, if this is all that's missing, which having stuff missing is one of our goals not to have it missing. <laughs> But this is a short list compared to the amount that we have them accountable for. There's 23 items on this list out of 65,000 at 23. That's not mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. And not all of it were, most of it's in two yeah. elementary schools. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 33 yeah. buildings and schools were audited, yeah. so that's less than one item per school. And if I had a, if I was a principal at a school that had a 99 or 98 uh, PC. I'd be happy that it was gone, probably, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two elementary schools right here have got the majority yeah. of them, and they, you know, they'll, That's what the age on these, they'll be falling off. So, I mean, that right. maybe get them but in line here with next time. So. Right. Well, were those values you put on there, were they the cost values when they were new? Yeah, that's the cost value when they were new. That's how much was written off. Yeah. Well, they've been depreciated yeah. now, but... Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. I'll second it, and I want to point out that the finance department and the mayor's office each were 100 percent accountable for all of their things. Thank so you. Good job. Hey. <laughs> I was getting ready to point that out too. <laughs> and you were audited. That's right. <laughs> and risk management and trustees office. <laughs> yes, if you haven't seen that, that's on page nine. If you yeah. haven't gotten to that. Uh, we can give some kudos to maybe some other people too because that, that list looks pretty impressive. We do have a motion and a second to accept uh, Mr. Brown's report. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Is there anything else that needs to come before our committee? I, I just got one item of note, and that is that the budget information is going to the departments. Uh, so we'll just, be starting. Didn't we just get finished with that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said today. Starting. Anything else? That's it. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you.